Hello. We've got another job come to do. This is uh, a paying job, so I'll have to knock everything else on the head and try and get this done. What it is, it's uh, it's from a local shop in near where I live. Well, when I say shop, they sell everything from paint thinners to nuts and bolts, safety gear, drills, power tools, all that sort of thing. And one of their customers has brought this in. Now this is off his wood lathe. He's brought me that as a pattern, well, type of thing. But what he wants is that thread in there is inch and a half by three eighths UNC. Uh, six threads per inch, that is. That's so obviously the male part of that is what's on his lathe, and he wants to fit this onto his lathe to use. Obviously, a smaller chuck, I don't know what he uses it for. But. So, what we've got to do is this in the back of here is completely different thread to that. And I've just had a right game trying to figure this out because that thread there. It measures 1.378, which uh, I can't remember what it is now, but that's an imperial thread. Yet, yeah, the threads inside it are not imperial. They're actually a three-pitch metric thread. So, it's proven already before <laughs> I've done anything. <laughs> you just get the feeling that it's going to be one of them. Uh, anyway. The drawing there is what came with it, and that's basically uh, what he's asking for. Uh, adapter for a bottom chuck. I suppose somebody may see this and say, oh, it's a such and such thread. But I've tried all my thread gauges in there, and nothing I've got comes anywhere close to getting anywhere near what it is. Apart from M3 seems to drop in, not M3, a three pitch drops in spot on. So that's the actual threads that it is. It's uh, This is the sort of thing that we've got to make. It won't look quite like that. I've just gone by his drawing but it's going to be out of the steel I've got and that's it. So it's inch and three eighths for six UNC. I've got to bore this end and then internally thread that. And this end, like I say, it measures uh, the idea of the threads is uh, 1 inch 378 but it's a 3 pitch <laughs> uh, I've worked it out the best I can that uh, we need to bore that to 1.5 and then thread it depth I'm not sure what the depth will be it needs to be in by 918 thou and obviously the other side in by inch and a half he's asked if we can have some uh, Tommy bar holes. If you're not from England, the Tommy bar is just a a bar that you put in to pull it round. If that makes sense. So I've got to think I'm going to do this because it's on a lathe, even though it's a wood lathe. I've got no idea at all what uh, what kind of RPM they run at. So it's going to have to be concentric, isn't it? No matter what you do. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that short bit of steel there to uh, inch and three eighths for six uh, six thread per inch and three uh, inch and three eighths yeah in my four jaw chuck and I'm going to leave that in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is machine it so that this chuck screws on to that thread. Now it's the only thread I've got to work with. Oh, I'm out the camera shot. Yeah, I'm going to turn that lump of steel to screw into there and I'm going to leave that piece in the four jaw chuck because that's the only sort of reference I've got of what his lathe chuck is. I don't think I'm going to make it uh, a normal super fine, uh, super fitting thread. I'll give it a little bit of wobble because we have got a register there. Uh, so I'll leave that in the four jaw and then I'll take the four jaw off, I'll put the three jaw on and I'll put that uh, in the three jaw and then we'll drill and bore this out to the female inch and three inch and three eighths thread 
and then we can try because this will be still in the forge wheel, won't it? We can try and make sure that that screws in all the way up. When it does, I can then take this out of the 3G. <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> Put the 4G back in, which will, this will then still run true. This piece then will screw on the end of there, and then I can drill this end, can I bore it to that other thread, uh, and then tidy the top up, uh, tidy the outside up, and everything. And hopefully, it will all run concentric. Everybody will be happy, and well, that's what I'm going to try. I've just noticed on the back of this, the index marks all around the back of that chuck. It's quite a handy thing. Not that I know anything about wood chucks, but anyway. Oh, it says max RPM 2500. Well, it gets trucking a bit, doesn't it? If that's what they go up to. Yeah, could you have a look at that? So, yeah. It's going to have to be concentric. So anyway, no milling machine work I'm afraid at the minute. Uh, although the mill's okay, I have noticed that on high revs I'm getting a slight vibration on the table. And I believe that it is the plastic bushings on the very pulley shafts that... Uh, you've got the very pulleys that come up and down as you alter the speed and inside those shafts where they go up and down there's some tiny plastic bushes, well not tiny, they're quite diameter's quite a size but they're only very very thin uh, so it looks like I'm going to have to take the motor off on another part to get at those bushings to replace them because I don't want to have gone to all that trouble of changing all the bearings only to put pressure on and possibly damage the bearings by running it if that's where the vibration is coming from. It may be that I change the bushings and it still does it and if that's the case then that's just how it's meant to run. There maybe is just the tiniest vibration in it or it's maybe me just being a big girl's blouse. I'm not sure yet but we'll find out. Anyway, we'll get on with this. Right, that's set up there. I'm going to come about inch 300 along here. That'll be long enough for this male thread. It's currently... Oh, I've got to get that down to 1375. I'm like a sieve, I just did measure it a minute ago. Ah, yeah, I've got to get 186,000 of it. So, yet again, quite a bit. So, we'll try it first. If I can get it in gear, we have got 4,000 feed per rev at 350 rpm, and we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Put, put on bogey. Start off small and work our way up, that's 15,000. See that. Try 20 in a minute. See where that goes. Good finish anyway. colour in the chip so there's no oh, breaking a nail up. Well, a bit anyway. And there's a little bit of colour in them as you see. Uh, if you watched the last video I put out, you'll know I've got myself another milling machine. Uh, 
and I got contacted from another lad who has some videos on YouTube. Uh, the, his YouTube channel is literally called YouTube Sheffield. Uh, and he messaged me and said he'd got some uh, bits and bobs that have come in handy for me. And I, anyway, put a long story short, I took a ride to uh, Sheffield. It's only about an hour and a half from where I live. And uh, met up with him. Really, really nice lad. Uh, let me get to the end of here. I'll be talking and look, look what I'm doing. And uh, car 25 this time. And uh, anyway, I went to see him. His name's Dave. If you like watching turning and you like the likes of Avon, then you want to be having a look at this lad's channel. There's no frills or anything like that. He films it just with his camera. Uh, sorry, with his telephone. They're uh, short video clips. But he runs old uh, Dean Smith and Gracie lathes. And he machines steel in a way that you know, I shouldn't think you'll have seen before. Very interesting, like. And uh, anyway, his name's Dave, and his YouTube his channel's called YouTube Sheffield. It's well worth a look. Uh, it just turned a piece of steel when I'd gone to see him. Well, he'd done it the day before, I think. And uh, I won't say how much the steel cost. But what I will tell you is that the scrap chips that come off the steel that you turn, I wouldn't want to pay for the scrap. I'm being honest there. The steel itself was oh, colossal. I think he said it was sent over to him from Germany for him to bore the middle out. And uh, you have a look on his videos and you'll see how he bores out the steel. He, uh, I think Avon turned some decent stuff, which he does. You know, I like Adam. He's a real nice lad. This guy's on another level. So, uh, anyway, he's well worth a look. skim pass and then once we've got that bit done we can uh, stick a thread on it and then try and get that chuck on there this is uh, the actual machining on this is not super critical for this bit as long as it's concentric and that part at the end there the shoulder, as long as I hit that and come out nice and square, then uh, that'll be alright. The other part will screw up and butt up to it and it'll hold it square. The chuck. So I just hope that I thread this to fit the chuck that that's come. When I thread the other bit and it screws on here, I just hope that it all matches up at the other end. But unfortunately, I haven't got any other parts of the machine here. So. But you can only work with what you got, can't you? So I've just had another thought. I don't think I've got a threading tool to do this with. Uh, I will have for the external, but I'm not sure about the internal. I might end up having to grind a piece of ice speed steel. But anyway, we'll see. Uh, we'll see when we get to that bit. Got to face it, go across the end of it in a minute, just face the end up. This part's not running quite true. What I find is if I haven't got any brass shim pads in the jaws, once you get them tight, you can't tap it and square it up that way because the jaws grip it that much. They just won't allow you. That should give us a nice register to... Oh, 
back edge of that one. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Right, we'll get set up uh, to cut this thread and then uh, see where we go from there. Right, cut a relief in the back there. Uh, ready for that, I've just changed the gears on the lathe. So we should be, see, should be ready to rock and roll. We'll do a little scratch pass and just uh, see where that gets us. Uh, actually, I might just slow that down a tad just till I get going. So we're on any number because it's 26. Ignore that first line there because that was where I did a scratch. If we go from there, looks on the money to me. Give it a bit of snot. Right. I don't know what steel this is, but I know cutting that relief, price it was hard. Looking down there, isn't it? Not hanging about. got the top slide set at 30 degrees so we're now going in at 5 power time. Fair bit of depth to this thread as well. Fall into the Zeus book about 100 pounds. Oh, 
what I still have to do is uh, keep going till it looks like a thread. those peaks in the middle start to come together a bit then uh, we'll have a bit more of a look She's cutting that. I think we'll, uh, we'll go on that one again on the same setting and just see. Yeah, look. Getting to that point now where it's taking quite a wide cut, so. Gotta remember we're only on a little machine. That was two. This will be the third spring pass at that. Yeah, that's a bit better. So on the uh, top slide, we're reading 85 power, but of course it's at an angle, so... I don't know how that works out depth-wise. There is a... There is, I believe, a formula that you can do to uh, work out if you want to go in 100 foul straight in, but you're going to use the top slide, set at 30 degrees. I think we'll do a spring pass there. There is a, a formula to tell you what the difference will be and how much further you've got to go, but I don't know what it is. Spring pass. So is that. What's up here? <laughs> the uh, shot dog's just stuck his head in the door and looked at me. You see what the time is. <laughs> Well, hang on a minute, thing while I get this finished. One oh, coarse thread is that. too much. It's more the uh, steel is so bloody hard. This is only a trial bit, isn't it? Well, not a trial bit. Uh, to hold it. Just 
shatter and it's that hard, that steel. And what we'll do is uh, I don't honestly think we're there yet, but best give it a go on and just try it. Just wanting to start. Right, I'm going to whittle away at this a bit more and then we'll see where we get to. I'm just going to turn the camera off for a bit because this, uh, this steel is that hard. Uh, I don't want to break my legs, so I better put a bit more concentration on what I'm doing. So I'll bring you back in a few minutes when uh, I get there. Like I say, Finn says it's tea time anyway. We're just about there, I think. Bloody hard stuff. Extremely hard. I don't know what it is. Well, I think we'll call that one good. Hang on, let me just put it, get it back on about halfway again. Well, there's no play in it. Oh, there is just the. You get to there, there's none. Uh, yeah, so if I, what my plan is now is to leave that in the forge yard, like I said before. Take, uh, uh, take that off, leave that on, because that's going to be my fit. I'll just run a file over that end in a minute. And then put the three jaw in and machine the female version of this in the other piece of steel in the three jaw and use this as a, as a template and then once I've got that fitting into the female you know and I'm happy with it then I can take that piece out of the three jaw, take the three jaw off, put this back on screw that other one on here and I may even uh, just uh, cut the end of it just to true it up, put a centre drill in it and just machine the outside down or I may put the thread in first, I don't know. I'll have a think about that when I get there. But, uh, I could only go in there in two thou increments because that's how hard that last bit was. And I don't know what the time was when I showed it before, but I'll show it what it is now. It's now half past six and my little black dog is uh, he's beside himself with worry because he doesn't think he's going to get his dinner. <laughs> but anyway, he will. I'm going to go and feed him now. So. I'll uh, maybe come back out after tea and do a bit more. Right, see you in a bit.
So, we're back again. This is the following morning. <coughs> uh, so, I'm going to face this end off. I'm going to drill this and bore this and then thread it to uh, 6 TPI. This is my plan. So, I'll get some uh, gearing going here. Different, uh, different set of gears here, so I don't know. Uh, perhaps I better just because I'm on a different set of gears. All my feeds are wrong. Well, say wrong. They're uh, different to what I normally do. Let's try that. See what that does. Place the front of that up, and then we'll get uh, we'll get rigged up for some drilling. That's a bit more than ten of it, not. I'm hoping that my uh, carbide threading tool will be enough to get the depth I need on the uh, on the internal threads. So, like I say, the part that was in there before that was just threaded, that's still in the forge. You're ready to go back on to screw this onto, and then we can machine the rest of this up. Uh, that's my plan anyway. So what would I say about all good plans? Now I think this bit of steel might be what uh, YouTube Sheffield guy Dave gave me. So, I hope it turns a little bit easier, or I should say threads a bit easier than that last bit did, because that other last bit was extremely hard. Um, just realised you can't see it like that, can you? <laughs> right. We'll come back when we get drilling. Looking at that, I've got a load of shite on the camera lens. <laughs> 